Hello, welcome back. Today, I want to talk about if you're building a secure system, how is it that you specify what security means for that system? Well, we said that security was something like protection of assets against threats. Uh, but that sort of begs the question of what threats, you know, what assets. Um, and the notion of security will differ widely between different kinds of systems. So, for example, if you have a wireless phone system, security for that system is going to mean something very different than it means for a military database system or for an online banking system. And so, the way that one usually specifies what security means for a particular kind of system or a particular system uh, is by defining what's called a security policy for that system. Right, so what's a policy? It's a set of rules that are imposed upon the various actors in the system that is designed to uh, implement some specific security goals. Right, so another way to think about it is a contract between the various actors and the, and the designer of the system Right, to say that if the system is designed this way and everybody follows these rules, then hopefully you'll get some aspect of security. Remember that security is a complicated thing. It may be about confidentiality, it may be about integrity, it may be about availability. Um, and so different kinds of policies uh, attempt to accomplish different things. Right, so let's look at a particular example as a thought experiment. Uh, in any university, the students' records are stored online in the university's computers. Suppose that you were tasked with designing a policy, a security policy, to protect student records. Well, how would you go about doing such a thing? Well, the first thing to ask is, what does it mean to protect student records? Against what threats? Um, in particular, you might start by asking, what do I care about? Do I care about confidentiality? Integrity, availability, all three. And who cares? You know, who are the actors in the system, the, the stakeholders, you might say, that really are concerned about those things, uh, integrity, confidentiality, and availability? Well, think about it from a student's perspective, right? Does a student care about the confidentiality of their records? Probably. But if we drill down to that, do we want the student to be able to see his records, his or her records? Probably. How about the student's parents? Eh, maybe. How about the student's girlfriend or boyfriend? Probably not. So there's certainly a, a hierarchy of people that should be allowed to see some records but not others. And uh, we would want to put rules in place to do that. Well, how about integrity, right? Who can change a student's records? Can the student change them? Presumably not. Can somebody working in the registrar's office change them? Probably so. Can an arbitrary faculty member change them? Well, perhaps if the student is in that faculty member's class uh, and they're assigning a grade, but, then, but even then the, the faculty member may not be able to change the records themselves. They may have to go through some mechanism within the registrar's office, right? So I think you can begin to see that defining a security policy, even a simple system like this, may be complicated. There's a number of questions that you might want to ask. If you come up with a security policy, that is a set of rules which everybody has to follow, how do you know if they're the right rules? Well, that's a good question. Let's think about a slightly different example. At the University of Texas at Austin, there's a policy in place uh, that contains three rules, at least three rules, and some others. Uh, the first rule is faculty and staff may not use student social security numbers uh, in documents, files, postings. The second rule, documents containing social security numbers must be destroyed unless they're deemed necessary for retention. And then the third rule is documents containing social security numbers that are deemed necessary for retention must be stored securely in a locked drawer or filing cabinet. Now, why would anybody put those rules in place? I think it should be immediately obvious that the rules themselves are not there uh, just for the sake of making rules. There's a larger goal which somebody thought was necessary to accomplish. That, that rule or that, uh, that higher level goal probably has something to do with protecting the confidentiality of students' social security numbers to prevent identity theft. 
And that's a laudable goal. But if that's the goal, why not just say so, as opposed to having these, you know, low-level detailed rules about how to protect documents and files and locked drawers and things like that? Well, that's a good question. A distinction that I like to make, but is not often made in the security literature, is between the policy, which is the set of rules that everybody has to follow, and something which I call the meta-policy. The meta-policy is sort of the overall security goals of the system. And so for the example we just looked at, the meta-policy is we should protect the confidentiality of students' social security numbers. And then the rules then are the, the policy which are designed to accomplish that overall goal. I would claim that if you don't understand the meta policy for a system, then the rules will seem arbitrary and capricious. And if you do know the meta policy, perhaps you'll be able to justify why those rules are in place. And so it's a good idea to consider the meta policy before you ever start writing down policy rules. Often the meta policy will be in terms of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Whereas the policy will be a set of rules which will have things to do with firewalls and encryption and locked drawers and filing cabinets and those kind of things. If that's the case, why bother with the policy? Why not just have the meta policy? Well, the problem with that is the meta policy may be ambiguous. It may be so general that every faculty member at the University of Texas interprets it differently. And so what you really want to do is have a set of uh, policy rules which are specific and enforceable and which everyone can follow. And hopefully the policy rules are adequate to uh, accomplish what you really want, which is the meta policy. So what have we learned in this, in this lesson? Well, a security system, the security of a system is often characterized in terms of the policy which is a set of rules about how all the actors in the system are supposed to behave. But really there's typically a higher level goal which the policy is designed to serve. We call that the meta policy. And if you don't understand what the meta policy is for the system, the policy may not make much sense. It may seem arbitrary and capricious. Thank you.